It is really good to be with all of you today. I've been looking forward to our time together. So we need to get ready. You'll need something to sit on, just like I am today, sitting on my rug again, my favorite purple rug. You will also need something special for after the story time, not art supplies today, but something else so that we can have a feast together. I have some things here that will help you decide what you might want to get. You need something to eat and something to drink. And I brought crackers today, my favorite kind, Ritz crackers, and I brought some apple cider, good for this time of year. So you will want to pause the video and go and get what you need to sit on and to share for our feast. Now that we have everything we need, we can continue to get ready. I am really happy to greet you today because that is a special way to get ready. The Lord be with you. And I am also happy to share this way of getting ready as well. When we share this together, the light, the story of the light. Listen carefully. Sometimes when we hear something more than once, we think we've heard it all, but sometimes God has something new for us to hear or something for us to think about. Listen, once there was someone who did such wonderful things and said such amazing things that the people began to follow him, but they didn't know who he was. So one day they simply had to ask him and he said, I am the light. It's always good when the light is here to take some time to enjoy the light. So we'll do that. And we'll think about how the light makes us feel. And this light doesn't stay still as I'm watching it. I see that it moves sometimes. But it doesn't seem to change. I wonder why it doesn't change. We'll keep it right here with us for later. Another way to get ready is to hear the words of God from the Bible. Our Bible in this room is right here in this special place. Everything in this room has a special place. And when we open it up, there it is, the Bible. This is a special Bible to me. It was given to me by a friend. It's called the Children's Living Bible. And what we know about this Bible or any Bible is that it has a front door, a way to get in from the front like your house, and a back door. Do you have a back door to your house? We know when we open doors, things come out or we can go in. And when we open the front door and the back door of the Bible, all the stories come out. And in this room, they are all around us. I wonder if we can go in to a story. That's something for us to think about. Today, I'm reading from very near the back door of the Bible. I am reading from the book of First Corinthians. That's a pretty long word. Corinth was a city. The people were called the Corinthians. And I am reading from chapter 11, verses 23 through 26. For this is what the Lord himself has said about his table. And I have passed it on to you before, that on the night when Judas betrayed him, the Lord Jesus took bread and when he had given thanks to God for it, he broke it 
and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is the new agreement between God and you that has been established and set in motion by my blood. Do this in remembrance of me whenever you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are retelling the story of the Lord's death that he has died for you. Do this until he comes again. Now, I am ready, and I hope you are ready so that we can start. We can hear our special story for today. We need several things, and they're all right here behind me. We need this. And we need this. And we need this. There's a lot in here. Once there was someone who did such wonderful things and said such amazing things that the people began to follow him. And one day when they were following him, they asked him who he was. And he said, I am the good shepherd. And I know each one of my sheep by name. And my sheep, they know the sound of my voice. So that when I call them from the sheepfold, they will follow me. I go in front of my sheep to show them the way. I lead them to the good green grass.
here is the table of the Good Shepherd. And here is the bread of the Good Shepherd and the wine. Sometimes it seems that we might need a statue or something to remind us of the Good Shepherd. But the Good Shepherd is here in the bread and in the wine. Sometimes someone comes to read the very words of the Good Shepherd. And sometimes the people of the world come. And even the children come. wonder if you have ever been to a table like this one. I wonder where this table could really be. I wonder if these people are all happy at this table. I wonder 
if they are celebrating. Take a minute to think about whether or not you think there is room for more at this table. And now we'll take some time to put everything away. All of the children all of the people of the world who were grown-ups. then the one who came to speak the words of the Good Shepherd. And the bread and the wine on the table. And the sheep. Let's put these back where we know they live in this room. The table of the Good Shepherd and the sheep fold with all the sheep. And all the people of the world, the adults and the children. And now I wonder if you're ready to have a feast together, right here, right now. I know you have your things ready. I have my things ready. The first thing you'll need is a napkin. Your napkin goes right in front of you, like a table while you're sitting on the floor. And then you can put your feast item there that you'll have to eat. And I have my crackers. And then whatever it is that you have to drink. I have cider. We do all of this to get ready and we wait for one another before we share in our feast. And now that your feast is ready and my feast is ready, we can pray before we share together in what we have to feast on here. When you pray, you can pray quietly to yourself or you can pray with words out loud. 
we'll get very still and quiet so that God can come very close to us and we'll pray. And then we all together can say, Amen, and enjoy our feast. I love to have times like this when I can feast together with you or my family or my friends. A feast time is just like a celebration. And I wonder if there are other celebrations that you have in your family that you enjoy. And maybe they involve a feast, maybe they don't. When people come together to feast and celebrate, we enjoy one another. It's a special time for us to be with each other and to be with God. People have been doing this around their tables, like we are around our table today, for many, many years. We don't need a lot when we feast like this to be together, just a little bit is still special. You can finish your feast and then we'll take time to change the light like we always do and to give each other a blessing. When you are finished with all that you want of your feast, you can take care of your feast things. Just put them to the side somewhere. Maybe there's a table nearby or a place where they can sit. If you didn't finish everything, you can finish it later or you can just have more later. And now that we have cleaned up from our feast, we can change the light. Remember that this part is so special for us when we have been together celebrating God's word, hearing God's stories, it's time for us to change the light that has been with us the whole while so that it can still be with us. So watch as we do that. I would never want to miss this part. Mm. The light that was here just a minute ago is now everywhere. I can still see it. It's going to go with us wherever we go. But we can't go away from each other until we bless one another. God blesses us all the time, every day, all throughout the day in different ways. And we can bless each other by speaking the words of blessing so we can remember how special that is. And we do it like this, making the sign of the cross. God loves you, God is with you, and God blesses you. And so do I. Have a great day.